All right, guys, welcome to Dropping Dimes. I'm your host, Lava Oriana, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. All right, guys, so normally I haven't been talking a lot about basketball as a late, but gotta talk about it. The team that, yes, I've been rooting for um, because of the players that are on the team. And a little bit disappointed about this, but yes. Broke the Nets and they're making a trade, and I honestly don't blame them whatsoever because I felt like it was a trade that they needed to get done, and that was to trade Kyrie Irving away. Kyrie Irving came into um, Brooklyn in 2019, where him and Kevin Durant were speculated to try to revamp Brooklyn and capture Brooklyn a world title, right? Um, Brooklyn hasn't won a world title um, since the Nets were, were, what's it called, in the ABA days, right? And Brooklyn as a borough hasn't won anything of a world title since the Brooklyn Dodgers, right? So Kyrie, Kevin Durant came with that mindset of trying to accomplish their own legacy and winning a title in New York. All right, because if you win in New York, you can win anywhere and you'll be considered as a legend. All right, look how we view um, athletes of New York that won a world title Michael Strahan, Eli Manning, uh, Derek Jeter, uh, Mark Messier from the Rangers, and stuff like that. The so on and so forth. All right, if you are if you win a world title in New York, of all places, then you'll get remembered and you'll be, you'll be remembered as an icon. All right, I mentioned uh, Mark Messier because I think he won like four or five Stanley Cups for, like, Montreal or something like that. Um, one, one of the Canadian teams in the NHL and wins one in New York in 1994. And it was able to know, be known as Mr. Ranger at that point because he brought something that is not, um, that has been done in quite some time, all right? And, but, look, Kyrie and KD wanted to come over here. Um, colossal failure, colossal failure. And I'll be the first one to address it, all right? But Kyrie... Demanded a trade. Um, the whole shenanigans with Kyrie from missing games in that first year because Kevin Durant was injured and he didn't want to. He came here to play with Kevin Durant, not to be just a solo rider. And then what's it called? Injuries, you know, the vaccine and all that other stuff, right? Um, the the statement that he made earlier this season that re- related to him being suspended. And now we have come down to ha- um, him asking for a trade. And Sean Marks and the Brooklyn Nets capitulated. And they were able to get him a trade. All right. And they were game- able to get him out of Brooklyn. Uh, under one caveat, Joe Sy said, trade him. It's fine. Don't trade him to L.A. Do not trade him to the Lakers. That is one place that he wants to go to so he could reunite with LeBron. And we're not going to capitulate towards every little demand that Kyrie Irving wants. All right. And I, and I applaud that from um, from ownership. Reason being, they are in charge of the team. All right. They can't capitulate to every little thing that a superstar wants. All right. That's how it's becoming a superstar league. And I can go on and on and on about that in a video and I can I could stretch that for hours, all right, on why I feel like making it a players league has kind of damaged my viewing of, of the NBA. But I can make that for a whole separate video if you guys want me to. But Kyrie Irving being traded to the from Brooklyn all the way to Dallas where he'd be teaming up with Luka Doncic. And I was very surprised as for that was a team that he got traded towards just because Luke was very ball dominant. And I know that the Mavericks have, for the most part, whiffed on a lot of their free agents. And in order for sometimes they, them to get a big time start, they need to go all out and try to trade for some for someone. And they were able to get that their big fish, their their point guard, their shooting guard, all right? Um Kyrie Irving, who is a magician with the ball and the man is a 50, 40, 90 guy. Um, whenever he is able to be on the court, all right. Then when he plays, he is easily a top five player. The only problem is is his availability. Will he be available to play? Will he want to be able to play? Well, I think that with Dallas, I think he will be able to. He will be wanting to prove to people that he is worthy of a max contract. My biggest question is this: One, why did Dallas 
really go all in on trying to trade for Kyrie Irving. I think it's a bad fit overall. I don't I don't see Dallas competing for a title. I honestly see this as a run to, and I think they're going to get bounced out in the first round, depending on the matchup. They're not going no further than, than the second round, but I think it might be a first round exit for Dallas, and I think that the combination of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving sharing the, the court together, I just don't see it working out whatsoever because Kyrie needs the ball. He's not a great defender. Luka isn't a great defender, but he's very ball dominant too, and I just think that even though people want to make the comparisons that LeBron James and Kyrie Irving worked work well together. But that was a forward, a point forward, and a point guard. This is not two guards, all right, or whatever. And a drastically large guard in Luka Doncic and um, a, a very, very well exceptional all-around player in offensively wise as for Kyrie Irving. Um, who did, what's it called, Dallas trade in order to get Kyrie Irving? Well, that would be Spencer Dinwiddie, who actually came up with the Nets, and I was a big fan of his, all right? Dorian Finney-Smith, who is a stretch forward, all right? The guy plays great defense. He can really lock down. I think this helps out the Nets immensely on the defensive end. I mean, you could put him and Royce O'Neal on the same court, and they're very good perimeter on defenders. And then they got the 2029 first round draft pick and a, a 20, I think it was like two 2029, a 2028 and 2029 second round draft pick. Um, honestly, the draft picks to me are irrelevant just because they're like six years away. Who knows what's going to happen with the team that long? But I think that the Nets got the better share of the deal. I just think that Kyrie and Luka doesn't make any sense. All right. I understand if they would have traded him to Phoenix. All right, especially with the fact that Chris Paul's you know availability as a point guard has been very limited and his absence has been been heavily missed during the playoffs, especially when they're trying to go for a deep playoff run. Um, Clippers could have needed him. I mean, you could have packaged up John Wall or something like that um, in order to attain him. Lakers really wanted him, but LeBron, what's it called? Unfortunately, he was not going to get his guy, and I just think that you know. If you would have given Kyrie Irving that cut, one, the Lakers could have been instant title contenders. And then two, you're giving LeBron the ability to chase for another rank. And I think a lot of owners are trying to avoid having LeBron James, um, you know, just be on another super team. All right. Kyrie Irving, LeBron James have played with so many superstars. All right. And it was great to see Joe Sy. Just say, you know what? I'm not going to trade you where you want to go. If you want, you want to be traded, I'll trade you wherever else. But you're not going to um that. What's it? you're going to go to Dallas? You're not going to go to LA. If you want to go to LA, you're going to have to wait it out another year. And who knows how well LeBron will be next year? But yep, Kyrie Irving is officially a Dallas Maverick. He'll be heading out there to play. I think Wednesday against the Clippers for his first game. Um, guys, mention in the comment section below if you guys want, or let me know what do you guys think of this trade. Me personally, I just don't think it's a great trade. I think that Kyrie Irving should have asked to make a list of where he wants to go, but Dallas is a place that he got traded towards. It'd be very interesting to see how him and Luca um, work with each other on the floor. I know when one is on the bench and the other one's playing, I think they'll be perfectly fine. I just see that this. Is it going to end well? And there's going to be a lot of um, influx, influx with the chemistry. But that's just my personal opinion. Until then, guys, I am Flaw Rihanna. Thank you for tuning in on this version of Dropping Dimes, the Kyrie Irving edition. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys. Have a good one. See you all. Hit like and subscribe. Really helps out the channel. Peace, guys.